Hi, my name is Tina. I'm head of design of Victoria Designs. We have another crafting kit for you, the Vintage Library Crafting Printables Kit. And with these printables, Alexandra has managed to make super amazing crafts, a desk organizer and a journal. And in this video, she will show from scratch how she made the desk organizer so you can follow along and also the journal. And in the end, she will also show quickly how she made the folio and the accordion folder. Alexandra has her own YouTube channel called Alexandra M, where she shows various very beautiful crafting projects and tutorials. I highly recommend to take a look at her channel. Now, if during the tutorial you think, hey, I want to make these crafts too with the designs of Victoria Designs, you can find a link to our vintage library crafting print kit in the description and now I'm passing the talking stick to Alexandra enjoy I would like to create the uh, organizer first and then get to creating the notebook so before I explain to you how we um, start to put this together and give you all the measurements I just wanted to show you how most of my projects begin um, I cut out the necessary chipboard pieces and I'm using the medium weight chipboard um, you can roughly see what's the thickness of it and then once I have everything um, ready to be kind of assembled I need to visualize how my project will look like so I use a painter's tape to uh, hold it together and just uh, give a final look and also thought if everything uh, is the way I want it to be. So let me uh, disassemble this for now and we will start from there. An important thing about each successful project are the measurements. So let's get to the measurements now. I will start with um, five chipboard pieces that I have right here and we will need two more for the dividers in our organizer or stand, however you want to call it. So I have a part which will serve as a bottom of the organizer here. And in inches, it should be four and seven eighths by six. You can also spot some horizontal lines on this piece. The first line stands half an inch away from the left-hand um, edge of this chipboard piece, which is 3.8 centimeters. The second one is half an inch away from the first, so the measurement in centimeters will be the same, 3.8. And then the um, distance from the second line to the right-hand edge of the chipboard piece is one and seven eighths inches or 4.8 centimeters. So let's put this piece down for now. For the back wall of our organizer or a stand, we will need a piece of chipboard which measures six inches on the long side by four and three quarters on the short. For the front piece, for the front wall. We will need a chipboard piece that measures two and a half on the short side by six inches on the long. Okay, and we will also need two identical pieces for the sides of our stand and these will be five inches by four and three quarters. And you can also see that I have some guidelines already uh, sketched on this piece, but don't mind any of them. You will just have to mark on the shorter side of this chipboard piece a tick mark that will be two and a half inches away from the... Uh, well, in this case, left-hand bottom corner of the chipboard piece, and it equals to 6.3 um, in centimeters, okay? So I will hold this for a second for you to have a better look at that. So this side is four and three quarters of an inch, or 12.1 in centimeters. This side is five inches long, 
which equals to 12.7. And I have a tick mark right here, which is two and a half inches away up from the uh, corner of the chipboard, this corner. Okay, let me rotate so that you can see the measurements. Okay, if you are still not sure, you can just pause this video and have a better look. But the second piece will measure the same, five by four and three quarters in inches. And then the tick mark here will have to be a mirrored reflection of this piece, okay? So that when we cut off later on these corners for our organizer or a stand, they will be, once again, mirrored reflections of each other. I hope this makes sense and I, um, anyways, we are doing all the tick marks and guidelines in pencil for now, so you will be able to, um, um, to rectify uh, the mistakes if they're will be any uh, later on as well. So uh, what's important for now are the guidelines right here and um, and the measurements themselves for all the parts that we will be working with right now. Okay. For holding all the pieces together, we will use some simple strips of craft paper and I have them here in different lengths for now. I will trim them to the needed lengths um, as we go and as uh, we assemble the uh, organizer. Um, and they are one inch in width, which corresponds to uh, 2.5 um, centimeters. Okay, so they are scored along the long side and I will use score tape in order to glue them down to the chipboard pieces. And just in case you wonder about the brand or the weight of the paper, this is the one that I'm using. If I'm not mistaken, it's from Joann's. It's all the information that I have on the paper, I hope this will help too. Um, some of you guys to look for the proper car cardstock to use for your hinges. I wouldn't recommend using anything thicker than 65 pounds because it's it's kind of already on the thicker side and we don't need that right now. Okay, so let's begin with uh, preparing two hinges that will be the same uh, length as the length of our bottom piece and it is six inches long. To the left and the right side of the score line, I will apply the score tape like so on both of the pieces and I will fold them now, burnish to reinforce the fold and use my scissors in order to Miter the corners on both sides of the hinges uh, so that they look like this. And when you miter that corner, please make sure that you don't cut off uh, the length of your hinge so that your scissors get right to the corner of the hinge and not trim any of the paper here. We need all the length of the hinge in order to cover the uh, sides, um, the parts of the chipboard. Okay, now let's remove the backing off of one half of that hinge and take our bottom piece uh, that will serve as a bottom of our organizer and apply this hinge to the chipboard piece so that we don't overlap 
the score line, the fold itself on the hinge, so that when you fold your hinge like so, you can still have a straight angle here. Okay, let's do the same on this side of the bottom piece. Next, I will take the piece that will serve as a back panel of our stand, remove the backing from the hinge, and keep this piece in a standing position, flush with the edge of the bottom chipboard, making sure that the corners meet, and while holding it like so with my hand, I will lift the hinge on the side and then flip the back panel to the working surface and burnish really good and then you will see that you have here a spacing between two of the pieces and this spacing is equal to the thickness of our chipboard and we need this gap so that we can freely fold the chipboard pieces and keep them together um, for creating our stand. Okay, so let's do the same on um, from this side and you can see how it looks. So it doesn't go, the side piece doesn't go on top of the uh, bottom piece. It goes right next to it. The same way it will be on this side. I hope you can see that better, like so. And that's the start of our organizer. Now we will prepare um, another pair of hinges, which will be five inches long. Once again, we will miter the corners and, of course, apply the score tape. Fold the hinges in half, like so. And then remove the backing and attach the hinge to the five inch side of the chipboard piece. And you know what? I thought that um, at a previous stage it wasn't even important uh, where exactly the tick mark uh, will be because you can um, mark that uh, two and a half inch uh, uh, point or uh, line after you glue this whole piece down to our base construction of the organizer. Okay, so next I will then remove the backing from uh, the half of the second hinge. We need to know where exactly to glue this piece and you will see that from the corner of this chipboard piece to the corner of this chipboard piece, you will have exactly five inches or 12.7 centimeters, not from this corner, but from this one to this one, you will have five inches. So in order to align this piece correctly, I would suggest that you first fold this back panel up, okay, make sure that it looks like this, and then while you hold this and this together, you will kind of match both of those corners and make sure that this side panel gets all the way to the edge of the bottom chipboard. Okay, you will have something that looks 
like this. And then the second corner will kind of align itself naturally because everything is trimmed down to the size already. So we just need we just need to start the whole process right and that's why we form a straight angle with these chipboard pieces and then we match them together and then once I have that done I can release the side panels and they will kind of flip down naturally once again okay so now we will get back to the guidelines that we had on the bottom piece of the chipboard and you will take your longest ruler and you will just use a pencil and the ruler to prolong the guidelines to your right hand side and to your left hand side and have them on both of the side panels here. That's what I already did previously on my chipboard pieces when I uh, assembled everything with the painter's tape. So I already have them here marked. Okay, and now if you haven't done that already, you can go ahead and create that tick mark two and a half inches away from the corner of this chipboard piece to the right side and two and a half inches away from the corner of this chipboard piece to the left hand side. Okay, I remind you that this will be 6.3 centimeters away from both of the corners if you prefer the measurement in centimeters. Okay, so what you do now is you make a guideline, an additional one. Oh, I know there are too many of them right now, but I promise it will get easier. So from the top guideline that you created here, from that line to the tick mark that you uh, marked before, you draw a guideline. You connect both of those points together like that and you do the same on the other side. Okay, so these triangular sections will have to be trimmed off and it's easy to do that. Just remember to protect your surface since you're using a uh, craft knife. I would suggest to use a non-slip ruler for that because we need to get a clean straight cut here. Okay, so you will cut this off and you will do the same on the opposite side. And that's the shape that we're going to have right now. Okay, will be assembled like so. This is how it looks from the side so far. Okay, it is now time to get back to the two remaining chipboard pieces that we'll need for our stand. And the larger one will measure six inches on the long side by four and eleven sixteenths on the short. Don't mind the shape for now. We will get back to it. And the smaller piece will be six inches long by three and nine sixteenths of an inch uh, wide. And these will be two of the dividers that will go inside the uh, stand. Okay, so I thought that uh, it will be more interesting to have this kind of shape on the dividers instead of the uh, straight line. So uh, if you think, if you think that 
it's too hard for you to do or you just don't feel like it, you can leave this line straight. And uh, I think it will be absolutely fine as well. But if you want to create the same uh, outline uh, for uh, the dividers in your stand, let me explain how uh, you should do that. I will just use a plain piece of paper so that you see better what exactly I'm doing. Okay, so our uh, length of the chipboard pieces is six inches. That means that the half will be at three inches. So I will mark three inches from the top and the bottom. And you now go ahead and connect those marks so that you know exactly where your middle is. Then from either of the sides, whichever you prefer, I will mark three quarters and three quarters here. Connect those marks as well. Now I will mark one and a half inch from this corner and one and a half inch from this corner along the upper edge of the paper piece or the chipboard piece. Then I will mark two inches along the three quarters of an inch line that we drew before. So two inches from here and two inches from here. And now I will connect those tick marks and draw a line here and here. And then I will use my craft knife in order to cut out this section. And then if you were really precise, you can use the template to sketch the uh, area that needs to be cut out on the second piece of the chipboard or you can just go ahead and uh, repeat um, the sketching of the guidelines as we did on the first piece. For our next step you will need four hinges that measure three and nine sixteenths long by one inch wide. The score tape will be on the outside this time and you will miter the corners the way we did before. So you will have four of those hinges. And once again, they are the same length as the short side of this chipboard piece. You will also need four hinges that will be the same length as the side of this chipboard piece, which is four and eleven sixteenths. And they will look the same. They are scored in the center and um, I applied the score tape to the outside of the hinges and mitered the corners. I will now remove the backing off one of those hinges and will match the corner of the hinge with the corner of the chipboard piece and apply it like so, so that the edge looks like this. Burnish, flip it over, take the second hinge and do the same. Flip it to the other side and once again apply the hinges. This is what you'll have. Do the same with the hinges for the smaller divider. And this divider is ready too. This is what we have. Next set of hinges will have to be six inches long by one inch wide. We will have the score tape on the outside of all the hinges and you will need to have six of them ready. 
Don't forget to miter the corners. So you will take one of them and apply the hinge along the long side of the divider like this. Same thing on the opposite side here like this and if you see that the hinge is slightly overlapping the fold of the side hinge just take your scissors and trim a tiny bit off to make sure that they fold at a straight angle both of them in all the corners Okay, do the same thing with the larger divider. Here we go. So these guys are ready. And the remaining two hinges that you have, you will attach along the long side of the bottom chipboard here. Don't forget to burnish and flip this over and attach the last hinge along the long edge of the chipboard piece that serves as a bottom of our organizer here and as you can see i'm making sure that the fold goes right along the edge of that chipboard and this side chipboard piece still can um, can be folded at a straight angle. To have the nice looking edges of the dividers we will need to cover this raw chipboard edge with the cardstock as well. And for that you will need, since we have two dividers, you will need two pieces of craft cardstock that measure one and three quarters of an inch by six. We need to know where exactly to start gluing them down, right? And for that, we will take a ruler. And if you have a Tim, Tim Oates ruler, that will be great. If not, you will just have to measure half an inch from this line that we had marked before so this is how you do it in case you do not have um, this kind of ruler if you do have the ruler then just use it for drawing a guideline half an inch away from this edge of the chipboard here okay and then next I will just uh, get back to my wet glue and apply it to this area right here and I will flip this to this side this is what it will look like on the uh, back side and I can already see that we need to trim this paper piece down a little bit, maybe just 1 16th of an inch, because the, um, the hinges were not folding at a straight angle. So now they are, okay? And that means that this piece that I have here, I will trim just maybe two millimeters or one sixteenth of an inch on the long side and and once again I will use my wet glue to glue the cardstock piece down to the chipboard to repeat the same shape that we have here I will use uh, just a template half an inch wide template that I have if you don't have uh, templates you can create them just take the 
uh, chipboard scraps that you definitely have from the projects that you have been working on before and cut a strip that will be half an inch wide and then you can use that chipboard piece for uh, creating guidelines that we will be creating next. I will start from these angled sections first okay and then I will align my template along the cut edge of the chipboard and draw a guideline here. So basically this is the trapezium shape that I will need to cut out. I will do the same thing here. Next I will make some cuts in the cardstock from this corner of the cardstock to that corner of the chipboard on both sides and from this corner of the cardstock to that corner of the chipboard in the same manner as we did here. Same thing here. Let's do the same on this piece. Now let me show you something. I have a template right here so that you can see what I'm talking about. When you wrap the uh, cardstock around the chipboard, you can see here that the chipboard in these areas will not be covered with any of the cardstock. That's why um, you will just need to use, uh, if you are working with the black cardstock, for example, you will need to use black marker in order to color these areas here with the marker. Or since I'm using the <clears throat> craft cardstock, I will just go ahead and uh, color these areas with the distress stain. This is really old. I don't think they have it anymore um, these days. So you can just go ahead and use your um, vintage photo ink or even a darker ink probably to brush the ink onto the chipboard in these areas that will not be covered again by the cardstock. So I will do it using the ink on this piece or I will use my uh, distress stain on this piece. You now what? Let's make it the same on both of them. Um, okay, now we are ready to wrap the cardstock and we will start from the sides here. You can, by the way, go ahead and miter the corners here just a little bit for a nicer look, but it's not 100% necessary if you don't want to do that okay like so i will fold these flaps in first and i will also add some glue to the edge of the chipboard here so that it looks crisp and after i burnish here and then I will use my bone folder in order to burnish on the back of this piece as well. Now I will fold the central piece. Before you glue these pieces, you will just have to make sure that there are no overhangings. And here, as you can see, I have a bit of a problem on this side so I will just go ahead and trim this piece like so at an angle and then I think it will look better yeah now it looks fine no overhangings on the front 
perfect. So let me finish with these flaps here and I will do the same thing on this divider and get back to you. Here they are, both of the dividers. I also went ahead and distressed the edges of uh, both of them using the Vintage Photo Distress Ink. Now would be a good moment to choose your designer papers for the project and I remind you that for my project I'm using wonderful papers from Victoria Designs. Very uh, beautiful pages with the vintage images and the uh, sheets that I am showing you here are uh, the background sheets which are included in the pack. Uh, I printed a few of them and I'm kind of choosing um, the ones that I would like to use right now for my dividers. I printed this sheet twice because I love it so much. That's exactly the kind of papers that I really like to use uh, in my journals. We will need to trim it down to the size that matches the area of our dividers. So for the smaller one in inches you will have to uh, cut a piece that will be five and seven eighths by three and three eighths and that's the piece that I will use here. Now, you remember the template that we created before? So I will use this template right now in order to sketch the outline of the upper edge of my paper. And the other way of doing it is positioning it in the center of your chipboard piece first with um, well, roughly 1 16th or 1 8th of an inch border, depends on uh, the size of the paper that you cut for your divider. Now I will just trace that edge there and I will then use either a ruler or in this case I will just use my template in order to sketch another set of lines about 1 16th of an inch away from the original one and then I will use my scissors to cut along that second set of guidelines. I don't want to distort the paper when cutting it with the scissors so I will go ahead and use my craft knife for this cut right here. Let's make sure that it fits and I think it does. So now we can use this paper piece as our template for the back of the smaller divider. So let me prepare a piece of paper which will be the same as this one. And I think I will go this time with, well maybe with this pattern from the pack. Distress the edges of those uh, two paper pieces and glue them down to the divider. So for matting the second larger divider you will repeat the same steps with additional uh, two pieces of uh, paper and this time they will measure in inches five and seven eighths by four and a half and in centimeters uh, 15 by 11.4. You might want to trim the uh, paper piece a little bit to make sure that it fits in between the uh, folds of the hinges on the long side. 
Now when the dividers are ready, we can go ahead and attach them to the bottom of our uh, organizer and let me show you how you do that. So I will put my uh, base construction on the table like so and we'll start with the uh, larger divider here. This is the back. I will remove the score tape from the hinge on the back of my divider and I will glue it down right along that guideline that I have on the chipboard starting from the corner here and matching it with the corner on the right side there. Now I can go ahead and use my bone folder to burnish on that hinge. Next, I will take the smaller divider and that's the back side of it, so I will do the same. Our dividers are attached like so to the base construction that we have. Right now I will need to add a few more hinges to our organizer and the first pair of them will be one and three quarters uh, long in inches. So here they are. They're as usual scored in the middle and I applied score tape to the outside of the hinge and mitered the corners on both of them. Now I will attach them <clears throat> right here. Okay, now when we have that done, I will need a piece of craft cardstock for matting the bottom of this section and the size of this paper piece is one and five eighths by five and three quarters. The next set of hinges that we will need for the sides of the middle and the front divider are uh, pretty small. They are we will need four of them, first of all, and the score tape will once again be on the outside and you will miter the corners like we always do. So the size of these hinges in inches is one and three eighths of an inch long by one inch wide. Glue them down on the sides right there, but before that, let's go ahead and attach the long hinge on our larger divider. Okay, so two hinges will go here. These little hinges are glued in place right now and we need to mat the bottom of the middle section and the front section. So I have prepared here two identical pieces of a uh, craft cardstock and in inches they measure one and a quarter by five and three quarters. I will go ahead and glue them down once again using my wet glue to their places like so and get back to you. This is what we have so far. To continue we will need again hinges, 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 hinges. That's what keeps our paper projects together. So two of the longer hinges that I have here are four and three quarters, well maybe slightly less than that, one sixteenth less than that. They will go right here and right here and we will also need two additional hinges that will be one sixteenth of an inch less than two and a half inches to fit in these areas here. Glue these down along the edges of the chipboard side pieces. 
and I will actually start from this corner here and not from the inside corner over there. Same thing on this side, I will start to glue the hinge down from this corner and move my way to that corner. And I will glue this hinge the same way, aligning it first with the corner right here. And then we'll keep on gluing it down along the edge of the side panel of my future organizer like so. Okay, now we will need to glue down these side panels of our organizer first and then we will assemble it by folding the front and the back panels as the last step. So I will now remove the backing from the small hinges and then glue the side flaps of the dividers to those little hinges making sure that you don't fold in the dividers themselves. Same thing on the opposite side. Now we will remove the backing from the long hinges on the sides of the dividers and we'll start to assemble our piece. Now before you attach these to the side chipboard piece, make sure that you see the guideline in there and that the guideline goes right against the middle of the divider chipboard piece. Okay, and the same thing here. And once you're sure that they are in place, then flip it to the side and use your bone folder in order to burnish. Now just use your scissors and trim the overhanging pieces of the cardstock and do the same on the opposite side. If you feel like you have a bit of cardstock still uh, showing in there, you can just use a piece of sending paper or a sending block or a nail file in order to send the remaining pieces of the cardstock off. Now I will stick the hinges together in the back of my organizer and I will remove the backing from the flaps of those hinges and now when I'm assembling this panel I will just make sure that I have it folded nicely there at the bottom. Make sure that it goes into that fold as it has to and I will first catch the corner here and the corner here. I will glue the top of the hinge on the side to the back panel and then I will fold I will flip it like so and use my bone folder in order to burnish nicely. Now let's do the same thing here in the front. And when you fold the corners, just make sure that you have a corner that looks like this. Same thing on the other side. You might need to push the hinge in just a little bit 
to make sure that the front panel goes in between the side panels like so and don't worry that it's not exactly in place because when you apply the hinges on the outside it will then be perfect and these are those hinges so both of them have to be two and a half inches long by one inch wide the score tape in this case will be on the inside and I will apply them to these corners like so I will glue them on the front first and then on the side Next, we will need a hinge to cover this edge of the chipboard, and that hinge will have to be six and one eighth of an inch long. The score tape will be on the inside, and as you can see, as usual, I mitered the corners. Before you glue it down, make sure that the flap of the hinge that will go to the inside really fits there between the side panels of the uh, stand. If not, just miter the uh, flap more on that half of the hinge. Okay, make sure that it fits. And I think it does. So I will start applying it from the flap that goes on the front and make sure that the hinge goes from corner to corner like so burnish providing some support from the inside okay now fold the cardstock first and shape it using your hands again or your bone folder okay now I will remove the backing from the tape and add some wet glue right on the edge of the chipboard once again just to have crisp edges now you can distress this edge using the ink of your choice and we can also distress these edges here and these edges and basically all the edges which are already covered with the hinges let's work now on the hinges for these sides and this edge of our stand so these guys will have to be four and three quarters long. I think I made a little mistake right here and I will tell you about it. This panel actually needed to go um, in between the side panels the same way as the front one uh, did. But I think it will not be that noticeable as soon as I cover the uh, corners with the hinges and well this is something that I will know about but uh, hopefully you watch the tutorial first and then um, go ahead and uh, assemble your project so hopefully you will not do that same mistake as uh, I did and even if you did I think it will really not be that much of a problem Okay, so I am covering the sides of the back panel with the hinges as we already did before when we worked on the front, so I'm not explaining too much of what I do right now. Then this top hinge uh, will be, let's see, I cut it to six and one eighth, but I think 
uh, because of that mistake it will have to be shorter yeah it will have to be six inches long so I trimmed it down a little bit now let's make sure that the half of the hinge that goes to the inside really fits in there between the side panels and I think it does so I can go ahead and start gluing the hinge down. The last pair of hinges that we'll need for our stand will be five and three quarters of an inch long by one inch wide. You will apply score tape to the inside of the hinge. You will miter the corners. You will need to miter them more, but for now, do it at the regular angle as we uh, did before. And now on the inside of the hinge where uh, there is the support tape, I took, before mitering the corners guys, um, I took the ruler and marked from this uh, left hand side of the hinge to the right hand side, I made a mark at two inches on the top section of the hinge and uh, on the bottom section of the hinge and then I also made another mark which is one seven eighths uh, of an inch away one and seven eighths of an inch away from the first one in centimeters that will be let me tell you 5.1 roughly and then the next one will be 4.7 from the first. Okay, so these marks will help us understand where to cut this hinge. And we will start by making a straight cut from that mark to the score line, leaving really maybe 1 16th uncut from uh, the score line to the cut itself and that's because we just want to attach this whole hinge right there and I will start attaching on this side from the outer corner like this up to the score line on the hinge okay and I can burnish here okay now I will flip the whole construction so that I'm more comfortable cutting so this line Th this mark here only shows me where two inches are. So I can first go ahead and cut at a straight angle from that line almost up to the fold line. But you can see that this long piece is still attached to the whole hinge and that's what we need because we need to cover these points of connection so that they look nice in the end. So what I do now, that little piece of the hinge, I'm folding it in and working on the corners with my fingers. Now I can see how wide the angle should be for me to trim more of that cardstock so that the whole hinge goes nicely into the uh, divider that uh, into the compartment that we have here and I think that will be enough so right now I will remove the backing and apply some glue to the edge of the chipboard and I will go ahead and glue this first flap of the hinge down. I will burnish. OK, 
Okay. Okay. Next, we will see where we need to make the next cut. I think we can go ahead and remove the backing from the bottom of this fla uh, flap on the hinge and glue the whole piece down on the outside like so. And now we have to work on separating this flap into two. So once again I cut at a straight angle and now I'm working on each section separately, folding it in and checking how I need to cut the corners so that the whole flap goes into the uh, intended for it section of the compartment nicely. Okay, so that's how it should look like. See how nice the edge looks? And we will do the same thing here, like this, burnish again. And now you can distress this edge of the uh, stand using the ink of your choice and I will be back. Now let's start to mat the uh, rest of the inside uh, panels of our stand. The larger piece for the inside of the back panel will measure four and a half by five and three quarters in inches. You will glue it down leaving a little border from the top edge right here and you can use your uh, wet glue or um, score tape once again or any other glue of your choice that you feel comfortable working with. I like to use wet glue for uh, these steps because if I don't attach the paper in the right spot I still have the time to move it around okay like this let me move it closer to the camera okay so I'm aligning it uh, at the top first and then use my bone folder in order to glue the rest for the sides Right here, you will need two pieces of paper that measure in inches one and three quarters by four and a half. And I forgot to say that, of course, I distressed the edges of those paper pieces that I'm gluing down right now so that everything looks the same. So let me glue down these guys and get back to you. All right, so the easy panels are now ready. Oh, except for this one. So here we go. This panel will have to measure the paper for this panel. I mean, five and three quarters by two and a quarter in inches. For matting the sides of the uh, middle compartment here, you will need two pieces of paper measuring in inches one and a quarter by four and three eighths. So you will take one of them and you will slide it inside the compartment and make sure that it reaches all the way to the bottom. So I'm using here a ruler just to make sure that I have it in the right place. Okay. And make sure that you center it between the dividers right here. So now hold it tight and use your pencil I might need a more precise pencil. Use your pencil to mark the line right there when you have your line, line marked, you will use 
uh, the ruler and cut a quarter of an inch away from that line but align the ruler along the guideline that you had and you will cut it like this okay now don't forget to distress the edge and you will then fold two of the paper pieces that you have like so with their backs facing each other and use your previous paper piece as a template for cutting the piece of the paper off the second paper piece distress the edge and you can now go ahead and glue these down leaving a little uh, border there at the top and that will also leave the border at the bottom here we go you will repeat these steps for uh, matting the remaining two angled panels uh, of the front compartment with the only difference that the papers now will have to measure one and a quarter by three and three eighths. To mat the front panel right here, you will need a piece of uh, cardstock, and I'm still using the vintage library paper from Victoria Designs. So, in inches, this paper piece measures two and three eighths by six inches. For the uh, bottom, I will use a piece of craft cardstock and it will measure in inches five and seven eighths by four and three quarters. In centimeters, it's 15 by 12. I will go ahead and glue it down to the bottom of the stand. Okay, now it's covered. And uh, the last thing that we have to do on this stand is covering the side panels with the paper of our choice. Here is the background sheet that I will use on the side panels of my uh, stand and I printed it out on the letter size paper, uh, trimmed the white borders all around and now I will cut a strip which is four and a half inches tall. I want to put it on top of this side panel first, like so, leaving about one eighth of an inch borders uh, around these edges on the sides that I can clearly see now at least, yeah? And then without moving this, or you know even better, I think I will add little drops of glue barely visible in the corners and I will glue this paper there in the corners then I will flip this whole piece and keep it standing on the table like so and use my pencil to trace right against the edges of the chipboard like so yeah the neighbors are mowing their lawn always just in time okay and then I will use my ruler I could use the uh, Tim Oates ruler but it's really well used and I can hardly see the lines which are um, at every eighth of an inch so I will use my uh, other ruler and we basically need to trim one eighth of an inch in from the lines that we have there. So that's what I'll do. I will, oh, not like this, sorry. Okay, I will use my guides on the ruler in order to trim that paper. 
I can go ahead and distress the edges of this paper piece and glue it down to its place and you will do the same for the opposite side of the stand so let me just glue this piece down here we go and yeah this is the only panel which is left uh, still not covered with the designer paper so we will need a piece which is four and a half by five and seven eighths or in centimeters that is 11.4 by 14.9 or 15 centimeters about that and I will glue it down here this is a really sturdy piece that can be used as a standalone piece or really serve as a stand for the journal that we are going to create in the next part of this tutorial. Hello everyone and welcome back to the next part of our tutorial. We uh, left off at the point where we finished covering the stand with the designer papers from the paper collection and I also cut out some of the ephemera elements from uh, the digital uh, paper sheets and added some of them to the front panel of the stand. I used some of the metal uh, pieces here as well just to add more interest to it and um, I also used some really old uh, round epoxy stickers that I had in my stash and uh, added them to these spectacles and I think it turned out so cool it really adds a lot of interest to this project they are one inch in diameter um, these stickers and when I purchased them they came um, like this with uh, uh, very delicate plastic cover and again they are one inch in diameter which corresponds to two and a half centimeters um, in size. Today we will work on um, the pages and the binding and the cover uh, for our notebook that will go into this compartment of our stand. I uh, already created two signatures and uh, according to my plan, um, at least for now, our notebook will have three signatures. The uh, journal pages that you have in the pack are absolutely wonderful. Once again, with all the vintage images, they look amazing. Uh, when I printed them, I printed... Um, two pages on one sheet. So I have uh, patterns and designs from both sides of the copy paper. And um, I separated them into uh, groups of uh, four. So I had three groups of four, four double-sided pages. And I already trimmed the border uh, from two groups of pages. And let me now show you what exactly I did there. We will uh, work on this group of pages together. So first of all, um, not to uh, cut each page separately and to save some time, I thought it will be nice just to stack the papers together and then use a stapler and staple the borders from all four sides. Um, this will ensure that nothing shifts while we cut. So I will then take my um, self-healing mat here and I will take a ruler and a craft knife and I will take my time aligning the ruler nicely along the edge of the printed design and I will 
cut each time rotating this stack of four uh, printed pages. I cut on three sides and since my paper is not tea dyed this time, I will leave one side stapled and I will use my uh, vintage photo distress ink just to go uh, around the edges that I have trimmed so far and um, color the white edge of the paper sheets. And then I will trim off the fourth edge and trying not to move the whole stack too much, I will distress the last fourth side of my papers. And um, these are our pages. Even if some of the pages moved while you were uh, trimming the white borders, you can easily fix that. For example, here I have a little white border showing, so it's an easy fix. I will just take my distress tool and will cover the white areas with the distress ink. But altogether, uh, I think it should work. So, okay, this step is now done. Now let's measure our pages. Uh, each of my pages is roughly uh, nine and three quarters by seven and a half. Um, I will now go ahead and fold each one of them in half. I like to add uh, tea dyed paper sheets to the pages of my uh, journals. We measured the printed pages. I have here four uh, tea dyed uh, pages that I'm going to trim to the same size and fold them the same way we folded the printed pages. And now I will form a signature just by stacking these pages making sure that I have one printed page and one plain tea dyed page one after another. So that's how I created my previous two signatures and now we have three of them exactly as we need in order to continue and bind them. My journal will have a hard spine and I want to try uh, a different kind of binding that is, the principle is very similar to the bindings that you usually use in your journals. And um, the difference is that I want to add something like um, thin, let's call it that way. So we'll see how it goes. For uh, the binding, I took a piece of craft cardstock and it measures five and a quarter by seven and a half in inches. Um, I also uh, drew guidelines on the back of this uh, paper piece and they are at one inch, three and three quarters, and at six and a half. You will have to score this uh, paper piece and let me tell you the score marks. In inches, they will be at one inch, one and a quarter, one and five eighths, two inches, two and a quarter, two and five eighths, three inches, three and a quarter, three and five eighths, four inches, and the last one here will be at four and a quarter. Once you um, score this piece, um, then as you can see, I distressed the top and the bottom edge of the paper and I also folded the fins where there are two gassets uh, three-eighths of an inch wide from both sides of that paper fold that I then went ahead and distressed on uh, both sides. Okay so we have here three folds that were distressed and these will be the places where our three signatures will be attached to the spine of our 
future uh, journal. Uh, since I will sew my signatures to the uh, binding piece, I want to ensure that they stay in place. I want to add a piece of uh, fabric. This is just muslin fabric. Uh, I will add it to the back of um, my uh, cardstock piece. But before that, let's uh, talk about uh, poking holes for our signatures. As you can see, I have here little dots in the places where I'm going uh, to make holes using my uh, poking tool. And they are at the intersection of the fold line and the guideline that we have created. Okay, so from the back, I marked those uh, dots and I'm going to poke the holes in them now. Okay, and the last one. So you will see now that we have holes on the uh, front, on the face of our uh, cardstock piece. Okay, so next we will uh, take this piece of uh, fabric and let me tell you that Roughly, it measures um, four inches wide. That means that it is about 10 centimeters wide. In length, right now, it is nine inches, let's say, or 22 centimeters. And um, I'm not cutting it yet. And as you can see, I, I just tore this piece of fabric from the bigger piece and um, the edges are frayed and they're really delicate. I want them to slightly show at the top and at the bottom um, of the spine of my journal. That's roughly how much I want to show on this side and on this side I will also cut maybe three millimeters or one-eighth of an inch away from uh, the edge of the paper and I will just start to cut and then I will go ahead and tear this and remove the threads that don't want to stay on the fabric anymore. I really like the look of the torn edge of the fabric. It's so nice. Um, anyways, let's continue. We have this um, fabric piece right now which is ready to be attached uh, on the back of the cardstock piece for the spine and I will just mark up to where I need to apply glue that will not be seen anyways so I will now use my liquid glue and stick the fabric to the paper Just like so. Make sure that there are no wrinkles on the fabric. We want it as flat as possible. And what I forgot to say that before you glue the fabric to the paper, make sure that you reinforce the folds. So the um, three folds that we talked about before will be mountain folds and all the rest will be valleys, okay? They will go in and these mountain folds will go up. I really hope you understand what I mean. Okay, like this, okay? Uh, now I have a template here and it's a simple one, it's just a piece of uh, plain uh, cardstock and I have holes uh, here in the same places where we uh, poked the holes in our um, binding piece. They are at one inch, three and three quarters and six and a half. I want to go ahead and poke these holes in each one of the signatures that I have prepared earlier. I will take my first signature and just hold 
the sides of the pages with the clips and then I will um, put it in the punching cradle all the way uh, to one of the side panels and use the template in order to poke the holes where I need them to be. Now I'm ready to sew the first signature. I think I want to use this one. I'm ready to sew the first signature to the first fin on our spine. So the I'm just using the upholstery um, thread and this one is by Coates and Clark and I take a little bit more than two uh, heights of the uh, page that I have here and since it's already measured let me cut two more for the second and the third signature. Alright, so I threaded one thread through my needle and I will now start, let me reinforce those holes so that I could see them on the back. Okay, and I will start from the first fin here. I will put my needle from the back of the binding piece to the front through the middle hole right now and I will just clip the thread here so that it stays in place. After I threaded the uh, thread through the middle hole of the spinal of the binding and the signature I will thread it through the top hole and then go into the bottom hole in the spine and in the signatures okay and then I will go back from the inside of the signature through the middle hole and through the middle hole in the spine and here I can unclip the thread and I will pull slightly by the tails of the thread and make sure that each one of the tails is on the opposite side of the thread that I have in the center and then tie a double knot here or even a triple knot and cut off the excess of the threads. Okay, so the first signature now is attached and what I want to do now is go ahead and fold the first fin that we have and stitch using a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine right along that first fin. If you don't have a sewing machine or don't want to use a sewing machine you can go ahead and use um, fabric tack and glue both parts of that first fin down. So basically you will apply glue if you are using the glue 3 8 from that fold or from the thread like this. You will apply the glue here and then glue it down together and we will then continue to the next signature that will be attached to the second fin and every time as soon as I sew the a signature to the binding I will go ahead and use the zigzag stitch on my sewing machine to keep it closed together. This is how it looks. 
this is the back of that pin and this is how the binding looks on the back for now so you can see that we can open the pages nicely uh, the threads that we have here you can either uh, trim them off or um, tie a double knot and then trim them off or leave them whatever you prefer I think I will go ahead and um, tie them in a knot and trim so that's how you attach the remaining two signatures to the um, binding and um, just make sure that they face the right direction when you stitch them to the binding this was the first signature this is the second signature already sewn and attached to the spine and now I will go ahead and attach the third and the third signature is now attached as well this is the look of the binding piece from the back and this is how the pages flip and lay down uh, on the front I think I want to add another run of a zigzag stitch to these gassets of a quarter of an inch wide yeah I think I will go ahead and do that and get back to you and I'm back this is how the spine now the binding looks on the back and this is what we have in between the signatures okay so these will be further on attached to the cover of the journal and um, the next thing I want us to do is measure so this one yeah the spine of our future notebook should be one inch um, since we added fabric here it is now one and one eighth of an inch and in centimeters that will be 2.8 okay and I want now to uh, determine what should be the size of the cover here are two covers and a piece for the spine the covers measure five and three eighths by seven and three quarters in inches you will need two pieces the piece for the spine is one and one eighth by seven and three quarters and to wrap our cover i will use craft cardstock as usual so if the uh, covers are seven and three quarters of an inch tall I will go ahead and prepare two pieces of cardstock which are they were just two letter size uh, craft uh, cardstock sheets so I trimmed them on the long edge at eight and three quarters so they're eight and three quarters by eight and a half I will go ahead and use a piece of score tape to connect them together or even two strips since I'm using the quarter of an inch tape here I want an overlap to be bigger okay so I will now glue them down together like this and use a bone folder to burnish now I like to add guidelines about half an inch away from the left hand side and the bottom edge of the long paper piece that I'm going to use um, as my cover 
Okay, so now with the guidelines, it will be easier to align the chipboard pieces. And I will also leave about one eighth of an inch in between the cover and the spine. And here as well. If you want to measure, go ahead and just draw uh, the next guideline, which will be a um, an eighth of an inch or um, three millimeters away from the edge of the chipboard here. I will go ahead and use the Timolt ruler as my guide because in thickness it is um, exactly a one eighth of an inch. So let me glue all the pieces down to the craft cardstock and get back to you. I have glued the chipboard pieces to the craft cardstock and now I will trim the excess paper half an inch away from the edge of the chipboard on this side and this way you will have half an inch um, border all around the chipboard pieces which is 1.3 centimeters and uh, we can now go ahead and first train our paper to fold at the top and at the bottom as well as on the sides I will use the corner mitering tool for trimming down the corners you can go ahead and trim those in the way which is uh, convenient for you now I will apply score tape uh, around the edges of the chipboard pieces and also along the edges of the covers which are close to the spine and on the edges of the spine which are close to the covers you know what let's do one strip here as well Okay, we will start from wrapping the long sides first. Don't forget to use your bone folder to burnish. As a matter of fact, it could be nice to run a bit of wet glue here on the edge of the cover. for getting that crisper edge that I hope you remember that we were talking about in the first part of the tutorial. I forgot to do it here, but let's make sure that we do it for the sides, for the shorter sides, I mean. Okay, so we will add the wet glue here and then wrap that edge and do the same for the opposite side. And this is what we have. I also distressed the edges of the cover since I'm using craft cardstock and I'm uh, going for a vintage look. I want to add two guidelines that will help me um, attach the whole binding piece with the signatures in the right spot on the cover. I will have those guidelines one inch away from the edges of the cover chipboard pieces that are close to the spine. So from this edge here, I'm measuring one inch away or two and a half centimeters. If you working in centimeters, okay, so the same thing on this side, one inch away from the edge of the cover. You can see that our cover is about one eighth of an inch uh, bigger 
than the uh, binding piece at the top and at the bottom there. So I want you to pay attention at that. I will now remove the backing from the score tape. Actually, you know what? I will start only from the cover. So score tape is quite strong and I think it will stick down to the fabric that we have on the back of the uh, binding, but I will still go ahead and use some strong glue. You are welcome to use fabric tag for this step, and I will add it to the areas that are not covered with the score tape. And I will start now, uh, attaching my whole binding piece with the signatures to the cover of my journal. So I will attach it on one side first and leave it like this to dry for a couple of minutes before I continue. Okay, the glue dried a bit and now when I'm moving the uh, signatures to the left or to the right, this piece stays in place and doesn't move. Uh, this is what I need in order to continue. Okay, so right now what we will do is this. We will take the backing off the rest of the score tape and I will add, first of all, strong glue in between the strips of the score tape on the spine as well as do the rest of the area here which is up to the guideline that we drew on the cover. Hold this whole construction with the binding and attach the flap, one inch flap to the cover first and hold it there for a while. Maybe you will want to flip your cover and hold it like, let me show you, like so at a 90 degrees angle and make sure that it sticks Here to the back cover of your journal. And while you hold it in this position, run your finger in between the signatures on that gassets that you have between the fins to which each one of the signatures is attached. Okay? and press to make sure that it sticks to the spine. This is how it looks from the top and the bottom. Okay, let me go back and once again make sure that the whole piece stays in place. There's a bit of glue here, it's okay. It will be covered by another piece of paper there. What we have to ensure is the fact really that the whole piece is not moving and stays in place. In a couple more minutes I will usually go again with my bone folder in those uh, sections between the signatures and burnish there again. I hope it worked out for you and we can move to embellishing the cover. Oh, by the way, the journal fits nicely into one of the compartments in our stand. It can fit in the middle section as well and to the front section too, but I thought it would be better to keep it in the back 
one more thing that you might want to do is to go ahead and distress those threads on the fabric to make sure that they match the general color scheme of our project. Now let me tell you something about my method of trial and error. There is this image included in your uh, project pack, uh, vintage library pack I mean, and it's the cover of a vintage book. When I printed it um, just as it was, my printer um, gave this result to me. So the images are five inches by six and a half or uh, 12.7 by 16 and a half in centimeters. So this uh, printed version was not fitted to the frame uh, while printing. And then I printed it once again and then I got the image which was taller, but I think in terms of uh, width, it was uh, about the same. So I decided to trim it down to the size that I needed and just add another layer of craft cardstock, uh, distressed uh, all around, and then I stitched that printed image of the vintage book cover to the craft cardstock. So um, I will give you my measurements and you might want to uh, print the image on your printer and see how it goes. But in my case, the pattern paper, this one of a book cover in inches is four and five eighths by seven and the craft cardstock base is uh, five and one eighth by seven and a half. So that's uh, what I wanted to tell you about the uh, printed images that I uh, am going to use for the covers of my notebook. For the spine, I just uh, cut a piece of uh, this paper from the pack and it measures seven and a half by one and then I decided to use this image of a uh, pen from um, the project pack which I trimmed a little bit down to be uh, half an inch wide by five inches long and then I layered that on top of another uh, craft cardstock piece, added some breads to this whole paper piece and I'm going to use it on the spine of my book. I had this piece of leather that matched pretty nicely the tone um, on this image of a book cover from the project pack and I thought that I will just layer that leather piece uh, paired with a piece of muslin that I had also um, left from uh, the from creating the spine on this book and then I uh, took this word journal there is a bunch of different words included in the in the project pack so I will now uh, glue this whole piece to my uh, cover and then once again zigzag stitch uh, all around this label to make sure that it stays in place. If you want to add metal pieces to this uh, part of your cover now would be a good time. If not you can go ahead and glue this down to your cover right now. And from here, guys, you can take embellishing of your journal further to so many places. I didn't create anything super elaborate on the inside covers as well as on the pages of the whole journal. And you might have already seen the uh, quick flip through in the beginning of our tutorial. I added here and there just a few decorative elements. On the inside cover, I just added a few uh, pieces from the cut apart sheets 
um, and I also showed them to you before. So I just want to give you, uh, in case you wonder, the measurement for um, this piece of paper that covers both the um, front and the back side of the cover. And the size for that piece of paper is five and one eighths by seven and a half. And uh, also, as I promised, I just want to uh, show you the uh, folio and the little accordion ephemera holder and uh, give you some measurements as well for those um, in case you want to uh, replicate them too. So uh, first of all for um, creating the folio for example I use file folders, green file folders. I got them in US from Staples and the box is quite big so I'm showing it to you this way and the size well I don't know about the size it doesn't say but um, this is how the file folder looks like I just uh, trimmed the um, edges with this metal bar inside and used the um, rest of the file folder and the score lines that are actually already there on the file folder come really handy when you create uh, different books with quite soft covers I would say but for this specific purpose it wasn't a problem so I just connected together glued together a few uh, pieces of the file folder uh, to create something that looks like this and I hope it is in frame right now so the size of um, this area here for example of the cover is five and three eighths by six and the size of the spine is one inch by six if you will have a look at the folio from the top you will see that these inside panels in my case are shorter than the covers and for that reason they kind of want to slide in and um, I just wanted to say that um, I recommend to uh, make these inside flaps either the same size as the covers which means five and three eighths by six or maybe only like one eighth of an inch um, narrower and I think then you will not have the same problem as I have here and the book will stay will stay completely like straight and neat and look like this and not like this see here on this side uh, but anyways um, if you fill it with lots of things I think it can also solve the problem um, in any case you will have to to play with it and experiment so um, yeah on the flaps here on the inside flaps I have added a pocket and this pocket is included in the vintage library uh, project pack there are actually both of them one in this color and one in the uh, kind of bluish green so I glued both of them to the opposite sides of the inside flaps of my folio and uh, I have created a few journaling cards using um, once again ephemera elements from the paper pack some more journaling cards and here I just stapled this um, circle to the a journaling card then when you flip let's start from this side first I created a big slide 
and added some twine here with the eyelets and there is a pocket that holds uh, again a journaling card in here this can flip open and then you can add some more uh, journaling here or embellish it further on this side I have a tag um, once again embellished with the um, papers from the paper pack and some more decorative elements from the ephemera cut apart sheets including those spectacles that I used on the um, stand as well. I love them so much that I used them in a couple of places in this project. Okay, so there is a pocket in here that holds a tag and then the pocket flips open. And here is just a piece of the tea dyed paper that I stamped um, in a few places. And here is just a little notebook with selection of different uh, pages like dictionary uh, pages and some uh, tea dyed um, numerous kinds of papers which are in here and even some leftovers from the printed uh, sheets of the paper pack um, so there is a belly band that holds this notebook in place and I added at the bottom of the page a little stopper um, that is mostly decorative because the belly band holds this notebook in place quite securely uh, anyways okay then on the uh, right side of our folio we have once again that same design with the flap that has a pocket and another tag that we have in the pocket with absolutely adorable small uh, library cards that go into that uh, library pocket and um, some more ephemera elements and of course the spectacles uh, on the front of the pocket then you flip it open once again, there is that same um, tea dyed paper with a few stamped images and another uh, booklet with scrap paper pieces that is uh, kept in place with the help of the belly band. And another slide with a pocket for a tag on the right hand side of the flap the size of this flap is five by six and the gusset that you have here is a quarter of an inch wide that's the folio and it goes to the middle compartment in my stand. The um, ephemera holder that goes into the front compartment here measures four by five inches and the uh, thickness of it is half an inch. There are a few pockets in here and each one of the pockets holds additional uh, journaling cards from the paper pack that I still need to embellish and probably the last measurement that I am going to give you is for the accordion pieces right here so for each one of them you will need a piece of craft cardstock which is three and a half by six inches and on the long side I scored it at every half an inch and then just glued the um, pieces of that file folder in between some of the um, folded um, areas to create the pockets. So that's the uh, little holder that goes into the front compartment. That's the end of our tutorial. I truly hope that you enjoyed uh, creating the stand and the journal together with me using papers, digital papers from Victoria Designs.
If you guys have any questions concerning this tutorial, please let me know. I will do my best to help. And uh, check out my blog post. Um, the link to it is also in the description box down below. You will find there the pictures of the finished project in case you want to have a better look at them. I will see you in the upcoming tutorials and hopefully this is not the last tutorial that I create for you using the uh, project packs from Victoria Designs. Have a great day guys and bye! Thank you so much for watching Alexandra's tutorial. I hope you were very inspired by it. And if you would like to make it with the printables of the Vintage Library Crafting Printables Kit, the link to that item is below. And now I wish you a very, very, very beautiful crafty day. Bye-bye.